Hello once again. Uh, I'm Josh and this is my lab. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can get some manganese dioxide, some carbon and some zinc from a battery. This is really useful for preparation for other experiments. For example, manganese dioxide is used as a catalyst to get oxygen from hydrogen peroxide. Carbon you can use in like electrolysis of water experiments, other ones like that, and zinc like I showed you last time, you can use to actually isolate some hydrogen. So what you're going to need for uh, an experiment like this, I've got safety equipment, gloves, lab coat, goggles. Sometimes I even use this respirator mask. It's not great, but it's useful uh, when handling the manganese dioxide because you don't want to breathe st that stuff in, so this just protects you pretty much. What else I've got is uh, some baking paper. I have a filter. The baking paper is so that the manganese dioxide doesn't get everywhere. It's really, really messy. When it's um, in water, it just gets everywhere. It's just crazy and disgusting. I recommend you get larger filter paper than I did. I only got 70 millimeter and it's too small, um, but you know, I've got to make do. I have got a spatula, got some pliers, got some scissors, and I've got a little scalpel, a hobby knife. Those are pretty much just so you can take the battery apart. Here, this is a high density polyethylene container. That's pretty much what I'm just gonna filter the waste into to dispose of safely. Also, what you're gonna want is an evaporating dish. For now, I'm just gonna use this little glass bowl. Okay, so first off, put your safety equipment on, obviously. Don't worry about the mask just yet. I grabbed this little multi-tool. It's probably the best thing to use in this circumstance. I'm just gonna start bending casing from the battery back. The next part you'll need a scissors or a little scalpel. For this I'm just gonna cut just around the edge of this plastic. A couple of other things I forgot to mention. You probably also want to get a mortar and pestle just like that and also some distilled water. So that there my friends is the zinc. As you can see, it's fairly dusty uh, and corroded. So that's my little carbon rod. Um, I'll put that in some water and I'll sand it with some sandpaper and that'll increase the surface area and activate it. It's full of water, but if you have it if you have it to this point, then you can probably just skip this part. What I'm doing now is just increasing the surface area of the whole thing so it dries out a lot faster, evaporates a lot faster. Um, to evaporate it, it's up to you. You can either put it outside in the sun, if you don't have sun, you can just use a lamp. I've got this halogen lamp that I'm just going to use. Um, it gets really hot, so hopefully it'll help evaporate this. So now I'm just going to wash and clean my carbon rod. Um, it's pretty simple and straightforward.
And now what I'll do is I'll just get some sandpaper. This is probably a bit too coarse, but it'll do. And just scrape it a little bit just to activate it on each side. And there we go. Make sure you've got a containment unit to hold your carbon in. And in it goes. Okay, now the zinc is fully dry. It's ready to go in the bottle. And there you have it. That's my zinc. Okay, so after a few hours of evaporation, this is the result. Um, we've got our manganese dioxide powder. Right now, I'm just going to transfer it into its little bottle. So, after that successful harvest, I got approximately 30.28 grams of manganese dioxide. So that's pretty good. And here we have the resulting carbon, zinc, and manganese dioxide. Also, feel free to leave me some suggestions for next time. Thanks a lot. See ya. My name's Josh, I'm a chemistry enthusiast, and I'll be cleaning this up.